what's going on guys this is necro steve and it's time for round two of the indigo league of legends playoffs um and this is actually an epic rematch for myself versus king of king is cloud excuse me uh if you haven't seen his channel for some reason if you didn't go look up at it after the first battle please go check it out at this time he has a great channel does some pretty entertaining narrations and uploads and uh, of course he'll have his side of the battle posted if you want to see his thoughts on the battle as well now for this battle in particular, of course, when we first faced the Tacoma Trevenus with the Venus Venusaur, we got a 5-0 victory with Spiritomb basically tanking hits and setting up on his team. That made team building very interesting for this week. Um, I knew he would probably expect a very similar team since it seemed to work. And on top of that, uh, I knew I could, if I really wanted to, try to set up with Spiritomb again. Now in that same line, that, that line of thinking really wasn't wholly appropriate because he's a good enough battler to adjust heartily and so I didn't want to approach it the same way. So this week, instead of what I brought last time, I have an Assault Vest Spirit Tomb with Rock Tomb, Snarl, Sucker Punch, and Pursuit so that way I can lower... I was worried about Nidoking King having too high of a special attack for me to handle so I could lower his special attack or that type of thing. So Spirit Tomb is going to be able to take some hits with Assault Vest and retaliate back and lower some stats. I also brought back Swallow Getting rid of quick attack for U-turn. Uh, Facade is just such great neutral coverage on his team. Mammal Swine is a little annoying with Ice Shard, but that's why we have um, Caesar to switch it to the Mammal Swine if needed. And this is a banded Caesar this week alongside uh, Callie the Drapion. This time we have the right ability on it. I use an ability capsule. Don't have to worry about crits this week. I still want to try to set up Toxic Spikes if I can just because his team doesn't like them at all. And we are rocking Scarf Latios this time I have Memento on it. Um, that was actually at the suggestion of my co-coach Aqua Cluncher. And um, we're going with Mega Blaziken just to try to, to put in a position to sweep here. My end game is kind of either sweeping with Mega Blaziken or cleaning up with Caesar. On these leads, I have no reason to not go for the um, Bullet Punch. He could have Sash and set up Rocks, maybe a mixed Hidden Power Fire, but that's not going to KO. So I get to do a nice chunk to a wheezing as it comes in. And I I really predicted him, predicting me to switch out. And I was very tempted to go for another bullet punch, but there, I didn't want to predict that early in the match when I have a free switch into Latios. Uh, I did bring Psychic on Latios because it hits wheezing harder. And he actually ends up doubling out into his Greninja, which is very scary. That was a good prediction on his part. Uh, I went into my Spirit Tomb here just to take these hits and see if he's running Life Orb or something. Um, turns out he's actually Focus Sash. He gets a critical hit on the first Dark Pulse, which is annoying. Uh, and then he taunts me, probably expecting me to set up. Because he went for Taunt, I thought he would just switch right out, actually, as I go for Pursuit. And then he goes for Scald, which actually doesn't end up burning. So I was very pleased to not get burned by Scald. Um, and here he had a 50-50 because he changed his typing back to Water. He, if he had switched out and I went for Pursuit, probably would have KO'd him. Um, but I went for Sucker Punch thinking that he would just attack again. And that didn't work out too well. As he goes out into Mammal Swine, I'm just going to go right back out into Psyka. Uh, if you guys follow my battles back during 4th uh, Gen, this is the same Psyka from back then. Just rebred basically even from Psyka. So we're going to go with this name for the choice bandit, Red Scizor. If you've ever watched Do Da Da Da. But uh, I just wanted to hit him with some bullet punches. He actually is a substitute Custat Berry set which means he does not have room on his set for Ice Shard. And in this whole battle, I was thinking he had Ice Shard, and he just had Icicle Crash um, and Earthquake. He does put up Stealth Rocks against my team, but once again, I'm able to force him out and do a nice amount of damage to Weezing. Weezing basically can't really touch uh, Latios, but I really, it, it would have been a roll to KO him from that range, because he gets a lot of HP back with Pain Split and then his recovery from Black Sludge. Um, I did not think that he would be staying in, and even if he did stay in, Dragon Pulse was a 2 hit KO easily, and he couldn't do much back to me, even with Shadow Ball. So I just went straight for Dragon Pulse, and that's going to be the first KO of this match against the Greninja, as it tries to switch into a predicted Psychic-type attack. Um, as he goes out into Tornadus, I'm worried, of course, about him um, using Knock Off on me. So I just go out into my Spirit Tomb here. It's at such a low HP that I really can't take these hits anymore anyway, and I don't have any way to regain that HP. Uh, as he goes for a U-turn, this is nice because I'm going to get um, 
basically switching priority on him at the, at the end of the day. He can't really go for pain split here. He'll give me back HP. So I'm just going to go for a Sucker Punch to basically negate the leftovers for the turn as he finishes me off with Sludge Bomb. It's interesting that Spiritomb was the first Pokemon to go down in this rematch in the playoffs when that was the Pokemon that caused him so much trouble last time. Uh, but from this range, I really thought that I could KO him with a Facade uh, Stab and also Guts Boosted from my Flame Orb. But what I didn't take into account is that after I protect, he will get an extra turn of recovery from his Black Sludge. So that extra turn will basically allow him to barely live my facade. And then Sludge Bomb brings me down to such a low level that after Stealth Rocks, of course, I can't switch back in. And if I stay in, I'm going to die to the burn. And so to that, we continue going for facade. And we're just going to go for one of those delicious double downs right now. Yes, double downs even happened in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what Swellow is really good at, is removing some of those walls. So now that Weezing is out of the way, we're going to go into Scarf um, Latios, and here I thought that he, I was really, really worried about him U-turning again, but since he did that last time, I thought he might stay in and knock off. I'm going to go for Memento to hopefully give a chance to Blaziken to set up. Uh, based on his team, now that I saw that Mamoswine wasn't Scarfed, it doesn't seem like the Tornadus is Scarfed. I really, really thought Skarmie is probably Scarfed, so I need to get to plus two speed before Starmie comes into this battle. Uh, he goes for Air Slash, and whoa, that actually does a lot of damage even though he's got minus two attack. Um, and that means Flare Blitz might kill me? Oh god, I live on four HP. That was close. He actually lived on four HP too, so that makes this moment even more epic. And fortunately, I don't have to rely on high jump kick, I can just go for a very safe knockoff. And he was Assault Vesta that whole time. More importantly though, I now have my plus two speed and he does not have Ice Shard on Mamoswine. So he is in a, a very Fuster Clucked uh, position here. Because Blaziken now has a coverage move to hit everything that he has remaining. And I'm just going to keep on getting faster and faster. Uh, Starmie is unable to outspeed me at plus three. And since it's holding an item, it won't be able to take a knockoff either. And that basically means that this battle is over. Um, at plus four there he has no priority on Ludicolo either and now I just have to hit another high jump kick to seal the deal so that's a little bit of a Blaziken sweep right there and that basically indicates why Blaziken went ubers because it hits so freaking hard um, but that was a pretty epic rematch I think um, it was we both thought that it was a pretty good battle at the end of the day so definitely go check out King's Cloud's channel uh, once again, great uploads, and it's also fun to see his reactions to what happened in that battle. Uh, but look forward to the finals that are going to be happening against U-Turn Crobat. Actually, I'm going to have that battle on Wednesday this week, so hopefully I'll have that up for you guys pretty soon. And thank you so much for taking a moment to watch my battle video. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.